in the ancient world they did not literally worship the sun the sun was used as an emblem as an image as a symbol of light of knowledge now for the profane meaning the people who are not meant to gain an understanding of the mysteries they were told yes you just worship the sun like you have a lot of these Kemet dudes out here who tell you yeah why, why can't we worship the sun the sun bring light and heat you know why they say that and why they have that low level understanding because they're amongst the profane they're not meant to understand the mystery school system the mystery school system is bent totally around the veneration of Nimrod and his father Kush who is Unk's crack pipe who is Unk's crack pipe who is Unk's crack pipe oh my gosh back at it again Christmas ain't got shit to do with no Jesus Christ except for the fact that as I've stated before Jesus and Lucifer is the same person because Jesus in the Bible refers to himself as the morning star and Satan in the Bible refers to himself as the morning star, okay? And you both see Lucifer and Jesus doing this. This symbol right here is called the symbol of apostolic succession, which leads to temporal power, which means that the Pope is the head of all nations and religions on the, on the earth until the one true God returns, which is Lucifer, okay? So you think you're waiting on a Messiah to return, but there were no vows back then, okay? So if you take all of the vows out of the word Messiah, it, it, it spells the word mus, like a snake hiss, like a serpent, like Lucifer, okay? And the word mus, okay, comes from demonic text, okay? And that's the name for the Egyptian crocodile deity for Sobek. And that all is referenced back to Freemasonry and, Illuminati, and the Illuminati because they consider the head of the Pindar a reptilic-like being or a dragon, okay? So if you're waiting on a messiah, a.k.a. a mus, you waiting on a dragon. And in the Bible, it says what? Lucifer or Satan are both referred to or referenced as a dragon. Okay? Lucifer in the garden was talking to Eve in the form of a serpent. A mus. I mean, excuse me, with a hiss. Like mus. And you waiting on the Messiah. So you think Jesus is your Messiah, but you know that Jesus and Satan is both the morning star. Most of you brothers most likely know this already. The term Vatican means the divining serpent. Okay, in the ancient world, they venerated the dragon slash serpent because of the correlation between the serpent and wisdom. The serpent is always going to be used as a symbol for rulership and divine wisdom. That's why it's likened unto the sun, because the serpent was viewed as being the enlightener of man, like the sun in the sky is the enlightener of the earth. So the correlation was always placed together. Once again, in the ancient world, they did not literally worship the sun. The sun was used as an emblem, as an image, as a symbol of light, of knowledge. Now for the profane, meaning the people who are not meant to gain an understanding of the mysteries, they were told, yes, you just worship the sun. Like you have a lot of these Kemet dudes out here who tell you, yeah, why, why can't we worship the sun? The sun bring light and heat. You know why they say that and why they have that low level understanding? Because they're amongst the profane. They're not meant to understand the mystery school system. The mystery school system is bent totally around the veneration of Nimrod and his father Cush. And also, in an extended sense, the veneration of Adam. R remember, Adam is the earthly man. He acts as one of the counterparts of Christ. Christ has numerous counterparts, one of them being Nimrod, another one being Adam. Adam was not a righteous man, despite what many people might think. He actually was the first Saturn. He was the first Pan. He was the first hidden one. When you read Genesis, the third chapter, of course, we see Eve get beguiled by the serpent, representing that entity of, of wisdom, of trickery, of beguilement. She got beguiled, and then she beguiled the man, or Adam allowed himself to be beguiled because he put her on a pedestal. And thereafter, after they saw that the quote-unquote fruit that they ate was good in their eyes and they got an understanding of, of sin and the difference between right and wrong, it tells you that they hid. They hid from quote unquote God as he searched for them in the garden. Once again, that's where we get the term Saturn from or Satyr from, S-A-T-Y-R. It means to hide, okay? The hidden one is allegorical, it's not literal. Now Saturn or the hidden planet falls within the constellation of Capricorn, as we know as the goat. That is why the satyrs are viewed as being or depicted as being half man, half goat, also known as Faunus. 
That's where we get the character of Pan from. The name Pan means to turn aside or to be turned aside. In other words, what? To sin. Okay? And Pan was known as what? He was known as the quote-unquote woodland god, the god of pederasty. That's why I go through these things in detail for some of you brothers to understand the meaning, the resonance behind why the priesthood of the Catholic Church, why they engage in what seems to be institutionalized pederasty or man-boy love. They're acting as priests of Pan or priests of Saturn. That's the end of this video. I really hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. And I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Later.